Hi, this is Susanna Bowling and the Times Square Beat, and we are with Nathan Gardner. Right now at the Workshop Theater, there's a brand new musical called The Astonishing Times of Timothy Cratchit, and it stars this amazing newcomer to the New York stage. Nathan, tell us a little bit about who you are and how you got here. Sure. Um, so I'm from Michigan originally. I went to Penn State for musical theater, and then I spent a few years in Chicago getting some credits on my resume, um, joining the Actors Union, and then I decided to move to New York uh, about three months ago. And in moving into New York three months ago, what happened? Um, well, about two weeks after I moved, I auditioned for this, uh, The Astonishing Times of Timothy Cratchit, and I was lucky enough to be cast. Um, so I did that as well as another new musical which did a one night only performance at 54 Below called Diana and, and Navy and the Golden Tooth. Um, so two new shows within three months um, and I couldn't be more grateful to have these opportunities right off the bat. Who wrote the show at 54 Below and can you tell us a little bit more about that one? Absolutely. Um, it was written by a young woman named Phoebe Neer, who is uh, a novelist who's now begun to write musicals, um, and she wrote the book. And it's written by Tomas Dunker, as far as the music goes. And he's an uh, R&B, gospel, jazz musician who also has started to write operas and musical theater recently. Um, so the two of them teamed up to write this show. Really interesting, unusual, um, sort of for, I would say, young adults as well as adults kind of story. And uh, the music is really the style is really kind of bluegrassy and uh, a little more gritty, and it was a lot of fun, and it was so totally different than uh, Timothy Cratchit, so it was kind of nice to contrast the two. Now, in Timothy Cratchit, you act, you sing, you dance, you create multiple characters, but it's almost like an throwback or an homage to It's a Mad Mad World or any done in the 1800s. But all of those madcap musicals, almost um, in a strange way like A Gentleman's Guide. Yeah, absolutely. That's what's one of the things that's so great about it is I have the chance to sort of portray a character over a time of his life where he's growing and changing and really coming into his own. And then also I get to do these really fun, almost commedia type bits um, where I'm creating this sort of over-the-top character. There's some dance. Um, and we get to do a lot of throwback to a lot of different styles. So it's been challenging in a sense to put that together in a workshop production, but also really rewarding and exciting to get to bring so many different aspects of my interests and in things to, to one show. And what did you draw upon to bring that character? Sure. So um, I drew a lot from my own life experience, definitely with certain parts of him, um, just kind of finding his place in the world. Uh, some of his family relationships, I would say, are similar to some of mine. Um, and then also, um, I grew up loving old TV. Um, I Love Lucy and Get Smart and all that sort of old comedy, a lot of physical comedy. Um, so I felt like I got to sort of bring some of that into this, which was really, really cool. I, I love how much of a throwback a lot of the show is, even while still being sort of contemporarily minded in the lyrics and in some of the musical styles. Now, for your audition for this, what did you sing? And also, what roles do you hope to claim in the near future? I actually sang uh, Go the Distance from Hercules, the Disney movie, for my audition, um, which felt appropriate at the time. Um, and, uh, and then I, at the callback, I did music from the show. And then some roles that I would love to play, uh, Pippin is probably number one. Um, it's, it's sort of similar to this story in some ways, just with about a character who's finding himself. Um, I just, I've loved that story ever since I was a kid. And it was actually the first role I played um, as a young actor. It's kind of the one that made me decide to do this professionally. And then another one I'm a little bit older maybe is Bobby and Company. That's definitely up there. George and um, in Sunday in the Park with George um, as well. Um, anything Sondheim, essentially. Henrik in Little Night Music would be a huge dream come true as well. Now, we have a lot of new contemporary musical theater writers. Who would you like to work with and why? And describe each one. Yeah. Um, Adam Gettle is probably number one. Um, he just, he's so intelligent emotionally and his his musical style is very much where I feel like I fit. Um, it's sort of a contemporary feel in the emotional aspects, but the music is so specific and complex, and it brings in some classical sound as well, which I love. Um, I also really like um, Adam Guan. Um, I've actually had the chance to work with him before. I think he's another one who's so smart and so emotionally honest and raw, um, but still very, very well-crafted. Um, and... Uh, 
Sure. Um, he just wrote a show called String, and I got to see a reading at Playwrights Horizons. Um, and there's a role in there that, again, I might be just a little bit too young at this point, but I wouldn't count myself out. Um, and there's a role in that show that I would love to do. Uh, the music is so beautiful, and the it's about Greek myths who sort of come down to New York and have to learn the way that we humans live our lives. Um, and there's a lot of humor and a lot of heart, and that's I think humor and heart, if you combine those two things, that's that's where I love to live. So, yeah. In coming to New York, you look very much like Nick Jonas, a very young Nick Jonas. Do you see yourself staying in theater, or do you hope to branch out to TV and film? Where does your heart lie? Sure. I think my heart lies in theater, um, and I w that's where I want to focus most of my career, but I love film um, and television also. And if I ever got the opportunity to do the kind of work that I would love to do in those mediums, I would be more than glad to. Um, I also really, I used to write a lot more music than I've had time to now, but I would love to do some recording. Um, and uh, I love jazz, I love, my musical styles range, uh, kind of run the gamut. So I would love the opportunity to sort of explore that um, as time goes on as well. In the shows that are playing on Broadway and off Broadway right now, what roles do you see yourself doing and what roles would you like to take in, take over and go into? Absolutely. Um, I think there's, in Gentleman's Guide, I know, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be around too much longer, but um, but uh, Monty in that show, I would love to do, just because there's so much humor, but it's also, you can bring a lot of heart to it, too. And the kind of quirky leading man is kind of where I see myself fitting mostly. Um, Waitress coming up, Dr. Pometer, um, it's not open yet, but that's a role that, as time goes on, um, that's one that I would love to play as well. Um, and um, off-Broadway, I'm trying to think of anything off-Broadway at the moment. Why Oh yeah, something rotten. I'm not as familiar with as Gentleman's Guide, but that's a not, I mean similar kind of vein. Um, yeah, just as funny as it is. Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. The yeah, um, either of the two male principles in Beautiful. I think there are kind of two different sides to me that sort of lend themselves to both of those roles, and I love that music and that to get the chance to do sort of some more contemporary music, but still with that you know that groundedness of character would be really really great. So. I play the piano, yeah, and I've been working on the guitar, I'm getting there, but I've d I do play the piano. Well, so. because when I started in musical theater, you were an actor and actress and singer, yeah. or singer-dancer, now if you're not an actor, singer, dancer, musician, God knows what else. Exactly, yeah, you've got to rap, you've got to write music, you've got to have to do it all these days. Um, it's yeah. I saw a show last night, Paper Bullets, where yeah. they had to all play guitar and play the beat. Yep. Yeah, and there's a lot of that. Any actor who has skills as a musician these days, it's a huge commodity. So, yeah, for some of us, it's kind of, because I feel like my, the styles that I love and that I gravitate toward um, are pretty wide. The breadth is pretty wide. So it's cool to get to go in and sing a si 60s pop song and then do a jazz song and then do a straight musical theater song and then riff and do all these kind of like really, cont like, I like the chance to do all those things in auditions, but there are times where it feels like, ah, like I have to, Add add to that list of special skills constantly. Um, so now, if you had to pick a song that most describes who you are, what would it be? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think, I mean, I think "Corner of the Sky" is a beautiful song, and it's so simple. And I know everybody knows it, but I love that song. Um, and uh, I think it describes a lot of who I am and w how I want to live my life. Um, I think that uh, a lot of what Adam Gettle writes also, there's a song that he wrote called Saturn Returns in uh, Myths and Hymns, and that's another one. I think I really relate to a lot of characters who have a lot of longing and who really just, they want to find their potential and they want to live the best life they can. Um, and I really relate to a lot of those types of songs. So those are two that I would say that come to mind. Um, yeah. And to wrap this up, what is the one thing that I haven't asked you that you would like our audiences to know about you? Sure. Um, I would say, oh, that's a another great question. Um, something I would love people to know, I guess, is my interest uh, in plays as well. It's it's really really deep and wide, um, and I love musical theater and music is a huge part of who I am. But um, but plays also are a huge part of my interest. And Edward Albee and Chekhov and uh, Shakespeare, those are three three playwrights uh, whose works I would really love the chance to work on as soon as possible. Um, I really, this show has given me such an opportunity to create a character and to be, to speak and to, to convey text in a way that a lot of musicals don't always allow for. And it's been really, really fulfilling for that reason. And that's something I'd really love to do more of.